take this opportunity to turn off all cell phones, pagers, blackberries, PDAs, camera speakers, bureau phones, bureau phones space heaters, <laughs> any other audio producing device that might interfere with the recording of the briefing. Thank you. Thank you. 
Good afternoon. Today we're releasing President Bush's two budget requests for the Department of Defense. First, there is the fiscal year 2008 defense budget, which includes the base budget and the FY 2008 global war on terrorists request. And second, the FY 2007 emergency supplemental appropriations request to fund war-related costs for the remainder of this fiscal year. In summary, the budget being requested by the President will make the necessary uh, strategic investments to modernize and recapitalize key capabilities in the armed forces, to sustain the all-volunteer all volunteer military by reducing stress on the force and improving the quality of life for our troops and their families, to improve readiness through additional training and maintenance, and by resetting forces following their deployment overseas, and fund U.S. military operations in Iraq, Afghanistan, and elsewhere in the ongoing campaign against violent jihadist networks around the globe. Since 1993, when I last served in government, the defense budget actually has taken a smaller relative share of our national wealth, while the world has gotten more complicated and arguably more dangerous. The resources we devote to defense should be at the level to adequately meet the challenges of the global strategic environment the United States faces today. To provide more detail on these budget requests, I will now turn the briefing over to Tina Jonas, the controller of the Pentagon, and to Admiral Steve Stanley, the Director of Force Structure, Resources, and Assessment for the Joint Staff. Thank you. Hey, Tina? Can you take a question, Mr. Secretary? No. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, and uh, welcome um, to all of you again. Um, I have with me Steve Stanley from the Joint Staff, as the Secretary said, and I would like to, before we get started, I just want to point out, I believe, uh, that today we will have uh, on the web, we'll have copies of what we're calling a summary justification book for the global war on terror uh, uh, budget for fiscal year 2008, and also a summary justification book uh, which will be on the web uh, for the 2007 supplemental. Um, and I think many of you are used to some of our products as well. We we provide the weapons, uh, the weapons book. Um, uh, to help you with some of those uh, questions. So with that, let me get started. I'd first of all like to thank um, thank my staff and thank all the assistant secretaries uh, and uh, controllers of the services. Uh, we've been very busy uh, over the last several weeks. Uh, we uh, uh, today provided over uh, 38,000 pages of justification uh, to the um, to the congressional. Um, uh, uh, to the Congress, and we've just met with the congressional leadership to discuss the budget. So with that, let me just um, get going uh, here. Uh, for fiscal year 2008, uh, the budget uh, consists of two parts. Uh, the first part is the uh, fiscal year uh, two, uh, 2008 base budget of $481.4 billion. And our priorities um, are listed there. Um, uh, we're, we'll be going through those in a moment, but they include increasing combat capability, improving force readiness, developing future combat capabilities, and improving the quality of life for our men and women in uniform. Accompanying uh, that budget uh, will be the fiscal uh, year 2008 global war on terror um, uh, Request and we believe that this will um, we uh, this is an estimate. It's a more or less a straight line estimate, uh, but it's intended to provide uh, resources we need for the for the full fiscal year. And the third piece, as I've just said, is the fiscal year 2007 uh, supplemental of 93.4 billion dollars. So we'll go we'll walk through each of these pieces. Uh, first to the base budget. Um, Many of you are familiar with our account structure, but many are not, so we've broken up uh, the budget into four categories. Essentially, uh, the budget uh, invests in four uh, primary areas. Re readiness and support, $146.5 billion, representing about 30 percent of our budget. Strategic modernization, which is $176.8 billion, or 38 percent of our budget. Training and facilities and family housing represents about $21.1 billion, or 4 percent of our budget. 
and military pay and benefits, including our health care, $137 billion, or 28 percent of our budget. Uh, walking through each of these pieces here for a moment, the military pay and benefits and health care provides for pay and benefits for 2.1 million active and reserve military members. And I've talked about the amounts there. Uh, included in this budget are, is $38.7 billion to sustain our high quality health care uh, program for 9.2 million beneficiaries. Uh, of note, we've got $15 billion uh, in this portion of the budget for the basic allowance for housing, and I'll talk to that a little bit later, and $4.3 billion for a basic allowance for subsistence. Uh, in addition, in our facilities piece, <clears throat> Uh, to improve the condition of uh, approximately 3,731 camp spaces and stations worldwide, uh, the budget includes $21.1 billion. Uh, we also include in this area uh, our base realignment and closure uh, pieces. Uh, we're going to re realign 24 major uh, installations this year and close another 24, 25 bases. And as I mentioned, $2.9 billion for family housing is in that portion. In the readiness <clears throat> and modernization portions of our budget, uh, we include $146.5 billion for readiness, and the key pieces are listed there, about $65.9 billion for readiness. That includes training for a full range of contingencies, including full-spectrum full uh, contingencies, uh, base operations and recruiting, another $59.9 billion. Uh, maintaining equipment and buildings, another 18.2, and our commissaries for 2.5 billion. In the strategic modernization piece, this is of uh, interest of, of many uh, in Congress and many here, $176.8 billion uh, included in that are ships, uh, Navy aircraft, 62.4 billion. Uh, this, su this supports a, the uh, Navy's 30-year shipbuilding plan. The budget includes eight ships. Uh, aircraft and satellites represent another $50.9 billion. Ground capabilities and support systems, $37.9 billion. Our science and technology and chemical and biological defense, another $16.8 billion. And the Missile Defense Agency includes, uh, this includes funds for the Missile Defense Agency of $8.8 billion. Uh, what I'd like to do now is just run through um, some of the increases, and so we've, we've uh, put a comparison here to the 07, and this is, we're using 07 projected enacted level. As many of you know, the joint funding resolution uh, in the Congress has not yet uh, been completed, and so we are projecting, uh, based on the joint resolution of the House, that we would finish our 07 bill at $432.4 billion. That would give us an increase of $49 billion. This is an 11.3 percent increase over that projected enacted level. It's real growth of 8.6 uh, percent. And the key things that we're, we have mentioned before, uh, in this category, we're including the $12.1 billion to increase our ground forces, and we'll talk to that in a minute, and I'll have Admiral Stanley elaborate a, a bit on that. But this is the 92,000 that you've heard about, uh, increasing the Army and uh, Navy, or Marine Corps and strength. Uh, $16.8 billion we applied to improving readiness and additional support. Uh, another $8.8 .8 billion goes to develop our future capabilities. These are our investment accounts, procurement and research and development. And we uh, put another $11.3 billion to sustain our all-volunteer force uh, and their families. And if we could turn to the, uh, to the uh, next chart, um, Admiral I'll have Admiral Stanley uh, talk to some of the capability here, but as you can see, um, this would uh, increase the Army from 42 brigade combat teams to 48. Uh, we'd be, tr we'd be tr moving to a end strength of 547.4 thousand as opposed to the 482.4, and the Marines would go to 202 from their one current 175. Um, Admiral Seaman. So this is um, based on the national military strategy for uh, National Military Strategic Risk Assessment, which the Joint Chiefs uh, put together. And 
what they did was they uh, assembled a, a view of what's happening around the globe and in cyberspace about the strategic environment. And what they found was that uh, there's three issues that are really driving the risk. And the, the first risk driver is the number of forces that are deployed forward currently. Secondly, it's the equipment utilization and where that the, those forces are using. And then it's actually the operational tempo uh, that, that is affecting the risk. What the result of that risk is that our forces that are forward now are trained for the mission that they've been given, which is primarily counterinsurgency operations in Iraq and Afghanistan. What we're challenged with is maintaining the full spectrum training capability that, that our nation requires of our forces. So that developed a capacity issue, and what's reflected here is the ground forces component of that capacity. And you can see uh, from the current baseline on the left hand of the chart that we're growing Army ground forces from a 42 brigade combat teams up to 48 brigade combat teams. There's also support forces that are part of that growth. Uh, the, the small letters at the bottom there is, is really significant, and it's the one-year home station for one year deployed is what our forces are experiencing today. As these new forces come online across the future year's defense plan, what we'll be able to achieve is one year deployed for every two years at home. That two years at home station, along with the required resources to actually train and outfit our, our forces, will allow us to establish that full spectrum training capability that we, we need. The similar uh, picture there for the Marine Corps forces, uh, where they're going from 2.9 Marine Expeditionary Forces up to three. And again, it's the same story. The, the, the significance here is the increased home station time allows us to develop that full spectrum capability. Okay. Uh, the uh, next area that we've talked about a little bit is uh, improving the force readiness and support. We applied another $16.8 billion to this um, category. Uh, of note is about 45% of that addition went to training uh, and additional operations for the full spectrum uh, training, increasing combat training center rotations, and increasing um, ship deployed uh, steaming days and flying hours as well. Uh, so about $7.5 billion you see there going uh, directly to, the, to those readiness uh, accounts. Uh, an additional $4.7 billion for depot maintenance, intelligence, and support, and also another $4.6 billion uh, for uh, equipment recapitalization, so another area of um, significant emphasis in this budget. Um, in developing future capabilities, uh, and I'll have Admiral Stanley talk to some of this as well, uh, but in our modernization accounts, uh, adding another $8.8 .8 billion, uh, primarily to our uh, ground, maritime, and air uh, systems, although we did apply some additional uh, amounts to the space-based systems, and I'll ask uh, Admiral Stanley to talk to this slide. Yeah, several uh, key initiatives here. Uh, if you look at the ground, uh, the joint ground capabilities uh, column, the far left there, what you see there is, is the, uh, uh, the reflection of our initiative to spin out uh, some of the capabilities that are being procured for the future combat system into the non-future combat system equipped Army. A good example of that is the integrated combat system, which uh, will be fundamental to how the future combat system will work in the future. We're using that capability and expanding that out into the, the, you know, the rest of the Army. If you look at the joint maritime capabilities, what you see is the first uh, 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 significant funding for uh, the next generation of aircraft carrier. And as Ms. Jonas has already pointed out, this is eight uh, ships in uh, the FY08 uh, budget, which is significant. Uh, in the joint air capabilities, we're uh, starting to uh, ramp up the joint strike fighter procurement. It's going from two in FY07 up to uh, 12 in FY08. It's the first year that we'll be procuring the uh, short takeoff and landing variant of the Joint Strike Fighter. And then space-based uh, capabilities, uh, it's a continuing of, of a lot of the efforts that are ongoing there, but uh, I guess I would highlight the, uh, uh, the transformational satellite, which require, will provide the bandwidth we'll need for these future systems in the future. Okay. 
Uh, in the area of improving quality of life, again, we add emphasis as we have done in the past, $11.3 billion in this area. Specifically, we add $2.1 billion for military pay. This brings the uh, military pay increase to 3 percent. Uh, the civilian pay raise will also be 3 percent. Uh, but of note, their uh, mil military pay is up on average uh, since 2001 of 32 percent, so that's an important uh, point for our service members. Uh, housing and subsistence. Uh, we added a billion six in this area. Uh, it, this increases the basic allowance for housing, 4.2 percent, and continues the commitment to no out-of-pocket uh, costs. Of note, uh, we're adding another uh, 28 um, over 2,800 additional privatized units, uh, bringing to the uh, total for at the end of 2008 of privatized units of 194,000. So that's an important point. Um, on the base operations side, uh, we added another billion nine. This addresses our camp spaces and stations. Uh, for BRAC, uh, we added 5.7 over the prior. Uh, enacted, uh, uh, projected enacted level to implement BRAC, and of course we're still working, going to need to work with the Congress on this uh, joint funding resolution to, to work that. In addition, we provide, we sustain the health care benefit and provide uh, $38.7 uh, billion in our budget uh, for that request. So those are the basics of the, um, of the base budget. I know you're an anxious to answer some questions, so I'll get to the uh, to the 07 supplemental. Can we have that slide, please? And I believe you have copies of this. Um, what we've tried to do this year for the uh, supplementals and for the GWAT request is br break out uh, the categories in functional areas so it's a little bit easier, more readily understood by people who are not um, budgeteers or accountants. Um, but uh, of primary note here, you can see that in the area of what we call continuing the fight, this includes our operations, uh, force protection, IED, um, the security forces, Iraq and Afghan security forces, our coalition Chart 13, support. 13, please. Yes. Sorry. You got that? Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, you can see that uh, we've added uh, another billion five for coalition support and our commander's emergency response program. Um, also, for our regional war on terror, our combatant commanders have requested um, some funds there and for military construction. So the total under that category is $68.6 billion. Um, th this uh, request also includes another $13.9 to reconstitute the force. This is repairing, replacing, and upgrading uh, combat losses or equipment that's uh, experienced wear and tear um, in, the, in the theater. And we can go through that in a minute and some of the details there. And of course, the uh, the new piece is the enhancing the forces portion, 10.9 billion. That the uh, portion on plussing up the 5.6 billion. I believe you guys uh, probably have seen this number before. We'll walk through that a bit. Uh, the acceleration of two brigade combat teams and one regimental combat team, and a portion to. Uh, to get the grow the force, what we call this grow the force, this is for the permanent end strength that we're adding, the 92,000, to be able to build some infrastructure and barracks and things so uh, they have a place to uh, reside when they come on. Okay, next slide, please. Um, again, some of the details here on the operations. I think many of you know this. Uh, we have those in your slides. I won't go through most of this, but obviously our operations costs there are the biggest uh, component of the continuing the fight, and those uh, figures have not uh, changed much. If you look at them on an annual basis, uh, uh, they have not changed uh, considerably. Uh, force protection is an area of added emphasis, obviously, and um, in our coalition uh, support and, and uh, commander's emergency response piece I've already talked to. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, on the security forces uh, piece, we're asking for another three point eight billion dollars uh, to train the Iraq security forces. I'll have the admiral talk to this in a minute, and also another five point nine billion for the Afghan security forces. Uh, the key distinctions here for the Afghan security forces: this is considerable increase over the prior year, is the acceleration and expansion of the program. And admiral, do you want to talk to uh, to some of this? Yes, and. This initiative is, uh, I think, key to the strategy in Iraq and Afghanistan. 
And what it reflects is a growth from about 328, for a rock, it reflects a growth from about 328,000 up to an end state of about uh, uh, 362,000 uh, Iraq uh, security forces that we actually complete at the end of FY08. Uh, similarly, for Afghanistan, uh, there is a growth from uh, the existing level up to about 152,000 at the end of uh, uh, FY08. So that those properly trained and equipped security forces will allow them to assume a greater role in the security of their countries and allow us to uh, achieve our long-term objectives. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, reconstituting the force, the, some of the types of equipment that we will be requesting in this 07 emergency supplemental, including seven UH-60 helicopters, uh, one CV-22. These are examples. Uh, more detail is available in the justification book. Uh, additional UAVs and two uh, Joint Strike Fighters. Uh, we'll also be requesting funding for uh, some of the lift capability, uh, additional C-130s, uh, et cetera. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, the, um, the U.S. Forces Plus Up, um, we have details in the justification. I think those are available on the web, uh, should be now. Uh, but it, it provides basically initial five brigade combat teams for about 21,500 troops and increased uh, naval uh, presence. About four billion of this is for the the army. Uh, the balance is for the naval the naval presence. Um, Admiral, do you have anything else you want to add to this? Uh, it reflects this reflects the uh, you know advice of the combatant commanders and the five uh, brigade combat team uh, plus up in Iraq happens over a period of several months um, to uh, establish and reinforce the security of Baghdad. The uh, Marine piece of this is uh, uh, two additional uh, battalions and a, an additional Marine Expeditionary Force. There are some extension of forces that, uh, that are currently in theater that uh, as these new forces flow in on top of it, that's how we increase the uh, size of it. And uh, uh, what's included here in the FY07 uh, emergency supplemental request is the cost associated with completing this in FY07. Yeah, of, of note, and I'm going to turn to the 08 <coughs> GWAT piece, but of note is we are not requesting funds beyond uh, this fiscal year for, for the plus up. Okay, I've already talked to the other two points there. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, for the fiscal year 2008 uh, GWAT, you'll notice the, the key changes. This is more or less a, a straight line, and we have included, again, for your convenience, in the back of the press release, you will see um, a, a handout that, uh, that breaks out functionally. You can do the comparison of the, of the numbers there, but essentially this is what we call a straight line, uh, more or less, um, to the previous year. The areas that you will see change. Uh, in other words, going down, or um, Afghan, uh, Iraq and Afghan security forces go down. Uh, and of co obviously, we don't have the plus up included in, in this portion of the budget. Uh, the, the BCTs and RCTs are not, uh, there's a tail to that of about a billion six, but that is the uh, uh, smallest piece of it. And obviously, the grow of the force piece goes, becomes part of, of the base. So we believe uh, these funds will continue to provide uh, what is necessary? Uh, we are the Congress has asked us to uh, to estimate our costs, and this uh, we believe complies with the and is consistent with the congressional uh, uh, direction to the department. And I won't. Uh, we've got plenty of details on the web for you on this, so I won't take a lot more time on that. So, uh, in summary, that's what we're planning to submit. We are submitted. I think most of the detailed justification uh, this morning, uh, about 38,000 pages per set, and we're sending up probably over a million pages in total. Uh, Tony. So a lot of people are going to wonder um, why the 08 cost for the war is $18 billion less than the 07 cost of the war. And how solid is the 141 figure? Do you anticipate this holding on till well, paying for all, the, all costs? And I had a follow-up. Yeah, sure. Um, I, obviously, I mean, the, 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 the key changes uh, are those that I mentioned for the, we're, we're not including the additional forces. At this point, we're not planning on uh, submitting anything else in terms of an additional supplemental, if that's what you're uh, concerned about. Uh, but again, this is an estimate. We did our best estimate this time. I think uh, we know that it will be wrong. Obviously, things will uh, 
conditions will change and um, and we'll have to adjust at that point. But this was our best uh, judgment at this time. It is based on an assumption of 140,000 troops uh, in Iraq and 20,000 in uh, Afghanistan, which is our baseline prior to these policy changes that were made uh, on the surge. There's a lot of criticism, a lot of skepticism in Congress about the 07 supplemental being mm -hmm. a Christmas tree, basically, mm -hmm. opened up by Mr. England's memo in October. Uh, to what extent did you, uh, using the Christmas tree analogy, play the Grinch versus Santa Claus and letting the services lard the supplemental with things that should be in the base budget? Well, I, 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 uh, comptrollers aren't always accused of being the most friendly people on the planet, but uh, but we, we did scrub quite a bit out of here. We, we use a pretty tight rule set uh, to scrub these budgets, uh, and we did we did um, return to the services some of their ideas. Uh, we've got a we've got a pretty uh, careful scrub. Uh, I know there's been some concern about the addition of the uh, Joint Strike Fighters. Uh, uh, the the Air Force is here, and they can answer your questions on that. But essentially, uh, there were three documented uh, combat losses of F-16s uh, recently, and so uh, you know under the rule set that we used before, combat losses. Uh, our fair game here, and so we included them. We do not have an open uh, F-16 line. There is an FMS line, but uh, we wanted to make sure that, that we covered those. So obviously the Hill will uh, take a look at that also. And we'll push back. Can you give one example? Oh, I don't want to spoil the party here. <laughs> Follow up okay. to the Joint Strike Fighter question. I was just wondering which version you talked about for that. Is that the Air Force version? Um, how much money including for that? Um, and just out of curiosity, too, I mean, you're not going to get a JSF in well, how many years? Are we? We're talking about the end of the decade before we're going to start all production lines. So I'm just curious yeah, how I that get, fits into this is This is the F-35. Uh, two are included. And I'll have the Admiral talk to the capabilities. We, we understand that these aircraft wouldn't be deliver, delivered till later. The question is, where do you capture the cost? Um, and, and we have to have some place that we can capture the cost of the loss, and it's not built into the baseline. And which version, what kind of price are you? It's the Air Force <laughs> version. It, it, we, have, uh, we have about $400 million in the budget for two. But they should deliver an FY10. So that's $200 million a piece, then? Uh, the, do we have the precise figure, John? It is about 400 million. Okay. Okay. It's supposed to be sixty-four million dollars, yes. isn't You're early in the production. Is there a reason why you didn't request funding for the plus up beyond this fiscal year? I, I think the secretary has said uh, on, on on the record uh, in past uh, that this is viewed as a near-term uh, initiative, and so we're relying on his direction and his guidance. And it's, I think, there's also been some concern about the CBO estimate that was. Has been out in the in the public, and we looked at that. And um, uh, one of the, I think they are assuming new troops, and they're also assuming a longer period of time. So this is a, a near term initiative. Uh, Steve, do you want to? No, I, I think that's right. I mean, right now what we envision is a fairly short uh, plus up. Um, so that's what the basis of the planning is, and we'll see if that's uh, accurate or not. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. uh, the $12.1 billion you mentioned for growing the Army and the Marine Corps, how is that divided between those two services? And also, could you address the question about extra money for a counter IED? I think you've got it in more than one segment of the... Yeah. How, how much does it I add think up to that? I, I, my recollection is about 7.7 .7 of that is for the Army and about 4.4 .4 of that is for the Marines. Have I got that right, John? Okay. Uh, and this follow-on question was... Counter IED money, uh, which I think you have at a couple different segments of the... What's the total additional money for counter IED? Uh, John, I think we've got 2.4 billion in the uh, in for for the IED defeat, and what's the the uh, uh, 08 the number? Force protection kind of capabilities you're buying, and obviously like up armors, Humvees, and, and things like that that have a counter IED kind of a kind of an effect. Uh, but the actual effort that is headed up by the Joint IED Defeat Office is 2.4 billion dollars. And that's for 08. 2.4 is the a 07. additional 07. 07. Additional 07. What about 08? John, you got the 08 number? Uh, the 08 is $4 billion. $4 billion. Okay. Okay, I, I pointed at this fellow with, in the back here. With that. Um, my if I understand you correctly, you're saying you don't anticipate another budget request. Can you fund the uh, increase in U.S. troops in Iraq if it goes beyond this fiscal year? Well, obviously, that uh, is something for the secretary and the senior leadership of this department and the senior leadership of the Congress to uh, to look toward. I'm confident. We just finished briefing the 
congressional leadership, and um, I'm confident uh, that as things conditions change, we'll be in conversations with them about it. Yes. Um, can I ask about the Joint Strike Fighter? There seems to be another uh, attempt to kill off the second engine, the Rolls-Royce engine. Did you consult with um, the British about that, and can you explain the rationale behind it? I can explain the rationale. I mean, the rationale is basically that the the investment, the, the cost of the investment, we don't believe is the risk of, it's, is offset by the risk reduction. So that's the basic business case that we use to make the decision to, again, you know, seek congressional support for not, not uh, developing the second engine. I can't address whether or not it was discussed with the uh, UK. Okay. Uh, in the weeds, question here about the TRICARE, the military health care system. Does this uh, budget number assume uh, a proposal to raise the fees again once again this year? It didn't work out last year. You're going to go back at it this year? Yeah, it, the, the budget does assume uh, that there will be a change to the program based on there's a congressionally directed uh, mandated task force that's now considering proposals. And I do have uh, Dr. Bill Winkenwerder here uh, to discuss that with you further if you'd like to get additional detail on that. Okay. Uh, going back to the 07 sub, you have that slide on the plus up, divided into three. One is the permanent end strength, ignoring that for a second. You have the actual increase in the number, and there's a second number that is accelerated, two BCTs and one RCTs. Mm -hmm. Is that permanent end strength, or is that also part of just speaking these guys to, to, to theater over the last couple of months? Let me, I'll have uh, Steve address that in a second, but the, the, you saw on the first slide, you saw that the Army was structured at a 42 BCTs. That was accelerating. The, the development or the uh, establishment of those BCTs. Um. So that, is, that is both of the second, the, the second and third numbers both go to permanent end strength, yes. and the first number is the only one that really goes to the surge. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. And there's really three part. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. Sorry, go ahead. Thanks. Um, can you tell us what kind of guidance you got from the White House in terms of taking on additional health care costs? There was talk of $40 billion that you guys were going to have to absorb. Is that the number, or, or did you guys get a bill from them that you had to? No, I'm not having any conversations with that. Okay. Uh, a question on JSF, and I have a quick follow-up. Um, the Air Force was briefing that the ramp-up for JSF is going to plateau at 48 airframes instead of 110, which would have a, a net effect on the per unit cost of the aircraft. What are your concerns with regard to that program's cost spiraling upward as a result of some of these you know, fiscal decisions you're making now? I do have a follow-up as well. Uh, the, the details of the ramp for the Joint Strike Fighter, I'll have to refer you to the Air Force on. Um, I understand. I think we do have the Air Force here, so we can uh, you can follow up with them. Uh, okay, break out. Well, I'll take a, a couple more questions. If I can ask yeah, oh, sure. um, on the readiness issue, the Air Force is also briefing that uh, they they're sort of saying that they're cutting back on accounts that are going to have long term impacts on their readiness mm -hmm. because of the the constraints brought on by the war on terror. Can you address if there's a plan to sort of get the Air Force? healthy after, you know, the readiness hits there, taking kind of like the Army and, and the Marine Corps? Uh, I will tell you that the Air Force uh, readiness accounts, uh, specifically for their uh, flying hour program, uh, increases by $2.1 billion. I would refer you to the Air Force for the for the breakout session on the rest of it, and I'll take another question or so. That's it. On the, uh, the war costs, um, can you just quickly explain why this time you provided all of this justification information? other than simply the congressional mandate for the 08 budget. And uh, were you, is there any plan to provide similar information on previous supplementals, justifying where all that money went? Yeah. We, haven't, we haven't seen this before. Yeah, I, I tell you, I, I, of course, we um, understand that there's a, a broader obligation. Normally, as many of you know, we provide very detailed and uh, 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 hard to read, in some cases, b uh, detailed justification books to our congressional committees. Uh, they're really designed, in my view, for uh, budget, budget analysts uh, to look at. So we felt that because of the broader uh, interest in the war that would be beneficial for us to, uh, to try to, t to broaden uh, the products that we provide. All of, the ju all of the justification is on our website from prior years as well, am I correct, on, on the prior years? Uh, we, we normally publish our justification material, but again, you wouldn't. It's hard for most people to to understand it. So that's why we moved to doing the, what we call the summary justification books, and we hope that that will be helpful uh, uh, to the public. Perhaps one or two more, and then we'll Admiral, break um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm sorry. 
Um, could you help us just distinguish between activities that take place under the heading of the GWAT as opposed to those that take place under what you're calling a regional war on terror? Yeah, um, you want to talk to that? Yeah, the, uh, they're both part of the global war on terror, but the, uh, the activities in Central Command, primarily in Iraq and Afghanistan, although not exclusively there, are funded um, in what you, I believe, designated as the global war on terror. The rest, the uh, regional war on terror includes things that happening outside of that, that theater, such as the Philippines, the Trans uh, Sierra initiatives, those types of efforts that are not uh, directly in the Central Command theater, but are ra related to the global war on terrorism. Yeah, I think the things like the Trans Sahara Initiative have been funded in prior, um, prior supplementals. Again, it's designed to, um, to address the regional issues that the combatant commanders have, have given us. And I'll take another question, and that's it. I have, how about in the back there? Do the numbers reflect the concern with uh, the joint CR, or, or do they just? Uh, yes. Do um, they in the higher numbers, 408? It is, if you take a look at our charts where you see the, the delta increase over the prior year, that does. Uh, but we're trying to, we're going to have to deal with, uh, though, is the implications of that for our 08 uh, baseline program, and we'll be working with the installations and environment people to do that. Okay? Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, if you need some directions to the breakout sessions outside the door, they'll be able to help you. Okay? Thank you.